<laughs> All right, welcome to the wild times. We are back. I'm here, the producer. No one cares about me. Hmm. Ratep is here. What is your name? The professor? That's what you call yourself? The professor. I have a PhD in technology. In as technology. You make fun of me for saying it that way. And filling in for Forrest, everyone's favorite guest. You guys have been clamoring to have him back since he was on last time. The Australian bro, the Australian broologist, Bradley Trevor Grieve, BTG. What's up, man? Woohoo! Hey, it's a pleasure to be back, gentle bros. Welcome. It's uh, it's a delight. <laughs> I'm I'm glad that Forrest is is missing in action. And us yeah. too. As a man of impressive dimensions, there's a lot of me to go around. Let's get into it. <laughs> so, Bradley, <laughs> well, what do you? Uh, yeah. We have a cocktail because we like to celebrate every podcast. I've got a Bitburger Premium Pills. What do you got there, Ratep? Very nice. This is just a standard vodka soda, nice and healthy. I'm on the impeccable diet, working on my pecs, trying to keep my gut huge. Very yeah. nice. Uh, well, I was digging around. I, I found a very nice bottle of vodka. Yeah. Found Ooh. a very nice bottle of Kahlua. Nice. And I created the mother of all black Russians. Oh, oh my God. God. <laughs> that yeah. jar's as big as your head. <laughs> that, that is the only jar size that's appropriate. Um, I am cheating <laughs> in one regard that this is made with milk and not cream. Because if I drink mm. this much cream, it's just going to be poltergeist for the second yeah. half of the show. But uh, cheers. Yeah. Cheers, mate. Dude, yeah, I, I, I can't He's wait. Really, I, really celebrating yeah, I, over there on his end. I cannot nice. wait to see you uh, 30 to 45 minutes into this show after drinking that thing. I tell you, we had a, when I was a young uh, lieutenant, uh, we had a horrible uh, accident. This is how I know about the cream thing. We had a St. Patrick's Day uh, <laughs> cocktail party, and everybody brought their dates along. We thought it'd be fun with this beautiful silver punch bowl from the Second World War. If we just... Uh, put in some Irish cream whiskey with pure vanilla ice cream, 50-50, <laughs> mixed it up, and the ladies oh, loved it. And yeah. about an hour and a half in, everybody was vomiting in the bathroom. So hopefully... It's <laughs> way too much dairy, dude. Like, that's... Yeah. I mean, vomiting, by the way, I think you're editing the story. I think it was coming out the other end would be my guess. It, it, it wasn't great. It, a, lot of, a, lot of, a lot of expulsion. A lot of, a lot of dairy exudate. It's it's like that uh, episode of Seinfeld where Frank is making the uh, he has a flashback while cooking and one of the uh, crepes bursts and everybody in the room starts freaking out and he just starts knocking the food out of everybody. That's what I'm picturing when this is happening. <laughs> Bradley, last time you were on your uh, your movie Penguin Bloom on Netflix yeah. was just premiering. I think it had already premiered in Australia at that point. It was just coming out in the U.S. Uh, how's it been, dude? How, has it been doing well? What's the feedback you've been getting on the movie? Um, thank you. That that actually sounded like a natural segue, and uh, it did. It has done very well. Uh, we're very grateful. It uh, it's done tremendous box office in Australia. It's still doing well. It's a top ten movie on Netflix for a couple of weeks, which was terrific. Here in the states, over in the UK, in France, uh, a couple of Latin American countries, and. Uh, the, the most treasured uh, territories of um, of the Canary Islands and um, and uh, and what am I thinking of? Oh God, the most corrupt country in Europe, small island nation, um, uh, Malta. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> the Maltese people love <laughs> our heartfelt movie. Uh, so no, it's been going really Good. well. And of course, we're still waiting to release into a number of very uh, important markets, including Germany, where the book was a huge hit. Because sadly, COVID has still kept all the movie theaters closed there and in almost all of South America. So wow. the rollout has been extended, but I just like to think that, that's that it's that much more love Open for the, the movie. Cabinet. Hell yeah. Absolutely, man. And a good one it was. Uh, Bradley, you sent us an email, so I'm just going to shout out your Instagram right now because it's fucking awesome. And I saw something on there that Will's going to pull up. Uh, it's at Tasmanian underscore grizzly on Instagram. It looks like you're getting sucked off by an animal underwater. Is that right. what's happening? Well, you've described it fairly accurately. Um, <laughs> and I think the, the advice I would give to all the young <laughs> biology bros watching this is that if you don't want your testicles uh, engulfed in the eager mouth of a giant stingray, then my advice <laughs> is to not forget that you have an open packet of bait fish 
in the front pocket of his swim trunks. And that's oh what happened my here. God. It was very funny. I got my hands out of the way because you don't want... Look, it's just a big slimy flesh pancake. But my fear was that if I grab it and shove it to the side, I'm going to get whacked with its, uh, you know, bacterial infested barb and end up with a serious uh, wound at best. And uh, I can think of two people. Um, who have died from a stingray encounter. One, of course, Steve Irwin. Another, a Tasmanian, uh, who just dived into a shallow bay, happened to be right on top of a stingray. It panicked, whacked him, and Oof. he fled out before he got back to shore. So it was, it was an awkward encounter. I'm laughing through the pain. But as always, lessons <laughs> to be learned. You're welcome. Did it actually yeah. grab onto to your, uh, to your penis? No. No, my okay. penis had fortunately uh, shrunken into a safe place, <laughs> but my right stomach, but my yeah. right testicle did get caught in its sucking clamp jaws, and oh. I had. Have you ever seen a? You, you played squash. You look like a. You're kind of a preppy squash guys. Yeah, um, exactly. Yeah, look like a squash. Yeah, sure. Ball. Yeah. Just this horrible, this horrible plum purple, and uh, <laughs> and also more hickeys oh on the God. side of my inner thigh. It was very very painful. I, and uh, you know I don't Yikes. recommend it. Uh, two stars. Two well, stars. Bradley, Bradley, your Instagram is is a great feed for anyone who enjoys the wild times. Give him a follow because, like me, Bradley's uh, over the age of thirty five, and we are stupid with technology and do nothing to uh, promote ourselves. But it's a fucking great follow, Tasmanian underscore Grizzly. Highly recommend yeah. you get on there. Fuck you're, yeah! You're always yeah. out in the I field like, doing shit, man. What mm-hmm. is the next thing you got going? I've got a few interesting things coming up uh, for the summer. Um, hopefully some Shark Week projects for this year and next. Um, nice. And uh, we're working on a few of those. And uh, I have something really big that I, I don't want to give away right now, but it's kind of a dream come true feel project that will kick off next year. And nice. you remember you remember the you remember the testicle shredding terror of Kuchnuu <laughs> when you first got there with those huge bears? Yes, very much so, that, sir. That in every episode is what we're going to go for all around the world. So I'm, I'm looking forward to that. And of course, testicle uh, shredding terror. I testicle love shredding it. terror minus it. death equals adventure. Retap, as you well know. And oh, yeah. um, <laughs> and uh, the other thing is, of course, we're still working on uh, the animated wildlife series uh, with uh, yep. Netflix, where we're where five episodes complete. There's twelve to be delivered. They'll all be delivered by July, and hopefully, be on air straight away. So we're excited about that. Awesome. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, Bradley, you've been on before. You know what we do. We like Mm. to run through anything wildlife, nature, adventure related that's in the news, topical, so that, you know, this is the only place people who are interested in that need to come to get caught up on the week. Yeah, I like to do that. I like to think of it as as a glory hole of biological nonsense. Thank you. That's (laughs) that's what you call it. I think the most important thing I've seen this whole week, you guys know that I'm a cat lover. This video went super viral. A cat, just a little domestic short hair, was in a caught in a burning building in Chicago and was Ooh, sitting on the windowsill yeah. and got caught on video making the jump. Mm-hmm. 74 feet. Uh, Will's going to pull up the video here. The cat. I'm not shocked. This happens all the time in Chicago. I've seen it a thousand times. Cats jumping out of fifth story windows. <laughs> Yeah, man. It's a common common thing. It's just like people getting stuck in chimneys constantly out there. <laughs> it's a- <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But- I just I I mean, everyone assumes the cat is a victim here, but based on their general malevolent demeanor, I can only assume the cat started the fire. <laughs> No totally, question. Totally, man. It is, without a doubt, yeah. Dude, as, as a cat owner and someone who often has candles lit to hide the scent of my body odor, <laughs> I can't tell you how often the cat must have its tail wave within an inch of the open flame. It's e- almost every day. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Dude, all they're doing is looking around, trying, waiting to attack something. It doesn't matter if it's fire, water, a bird. They're going to they're gonna hunt it if it moves. Mm. Uh, so, I Will, go, go ahead and play the video here, Will. So you can see the, the windows have been smashed out. By the cat. Yeah, the cat <laughs> did it. The cat's sitting in that window over to the right of your screen. In the I'm middle just, window. Yeah. I'm just impressed From that it, critically. It's waiting. It's waiting to the last minute. Just what I would do, of course. Well, right? it's, trying to, it's trying to gather a crowd. It wants to be on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> all, 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 cats, all cats are narcissists. 
That's true. <laughs> and here he goes. That here needs he goes. to go on a shirt. Oh, oh. man. Oh. Boom. Dude. Boom. Sticks that the is landing. crazy. Dude, wow. he just had like a little fucking bounce and he was good to go, man. Lucky he landed on that uh, that lush cropped grass. If he landed on that wall. Oh, oh he's yeah. fucked. Yeah. yeah. But five stories. OK, you've got 14 feet per story in the U.S. That's a 70, you know, and it's up a little bit because it's in the window. I mean, that's a 70 foot jump. Yeah. yeah. Did you- Plus, he had to jump out across the gap over the wall and hit a narrow nature strip that's what three, four feet wide. That's impressive accuracy. Impressive Absolutely. accuracy. Absolutely. This fucking cat knows knew what he was doing. I rappelled down a fifty foot wall one time for a mm. class in college. I was mm. like, I'll never go higher than ten feet again on anything in my life. Cats. I mean, the f- the fact that they say that they they a they have nine lives. B yeah. they always land. On their feet. This is fucking nuts. We're watching it in slow motion. I would, I would argue that, relatively speaking, that that qualifies as a parachute-free base jump. I mean, <laughs> in terms of in terms of altitude, absolutely. You know, I, I, I remember back in the early days of the space program, they actually took a number of cats up into you know the vomit comet, the parabolic flight, to simulate weightlessness and to work out how cats <laughs> would orientate themselves in zero gravity. It's mm. one of those many expensive government studies that yielded zero useful data, but you can find that footage on YouTube of cats zero G and it is, uh, it's horrendous. I mean, they look really pissed off, which I know they always do, but yeah. they, they, they definitely without gravity, they definitely were very confused and upset. I feel like it was probably inhumane, but also hilarious. Wow. And they're on, <laughs> therefore I'm conflicted. We, uh, we were looking at a picture last week, a week or two ago. I can't remember but um, it was a drawing from many thousands of years ago mm. that somebody had come up with a plan to put um, uh, like yearns or what are they like like uh, sacks on the backs of cats, good, and then uh, set them on fire and then send the cats in like uh, bigger cats, you know, into the town and the logic as like an act of war, you know, like a way to battle. And the thought was that the cats would like run into a barn where there's hay and all this flammable shit and they would set everything on fire and set the whole place on fire. And then they also, they had other drawings where they were going to do this with with flying creatures and birds and whatnot. So I think we haven't really evolved too much from that era to here. This this may be actually an execution of that city's plan. The building was burnt. The cat escaped unscathed. I would regard that as a successful mission. Um, I would actually point out to you that that plan was revitalized in World War II with bats. And uh, the problem was the, the bat bombs, as they were known, they carried these small explosives that were, were an incendiary, uh, incendiary device or a firebomb. Yeah. And the problem was they all went back to roost in the buildings and set everything on fire before they could even be deployed. But, yeah, hilariously bad plan. Weaponized animals virtually never work. I can't think of one other than perhaps a cavalry charge with a horse and the use of elephants, again, really as cavalry. That yeah. has worked very well. Although I did visit the nuclear uh, <coughs> submarine base in Kings Bay, Georgia, Swiftland, uh, hmm. where they have all these uh, massive Ohio-class submarines equipped with planet-killing uh, Trident II missiles. Um, you know, each one's like a hundred wow. times more powerful than the bombs dropped on Nagasaki and Hiroshima. And they're so, crazy. the range is incredible. You can fire one from Brazil, the coast of Brazil, and hit a picnic blanket in France. Anyway. That's great. I, I feel comfortable living my life for the rest of the, for, for <laughs> it now. <laughs> Fucking hell, man. But, <laughs> but the, but the important part about the weaponized animals is that they have trained, uh, dolphins and seals patrolling the bottom of these submarines. They sit in these giant hangars that are much bigger than an aircraft hangar, and they're over the wow. water. So the submarine's still in water, but under this giant hangar. Uh-huh. And the underneath side are patrolled by these giant seals and dolphins all the time um, so that uh, That's enemy fucking nuts. Uh, frogmen and saboteurs can't get in there and eviscerate your billion-dollar nuclear submarine. So what do they do? So these are these are basically like animals that will alert 
the the humans if some if something comes in. It's not like they'll actually attack them or anything or defend them. No, I asked to meet the animals and they wouldn't let me. And top um, secret. <laughs> yeah, and and um, I had a friend who was a missile um, tech. Uh, the work there and, and because of my military background I was able to get in but they wouldn't yeah, let yeah. me see everything and they wouldn't let me meet the seals they wouldn't let me meet the dolphins um but i will tell you this as you should you know a big seal particularly a bull seal almost regardless of species is basically a lion in a wetsuit so i would wow. not want to run into those i know off the coast of south australia a number of uh great white shark attacks have actually been found out to be bull seal attacks and they'll really? take off, and the, yeah, they'll take off a limb uh, quite easily. So, um, wow. yeah, it's a so good I, battle royale I, creature for my there arsenal. There you go. Yeah, Bull you'll seal. fuck it up in the end, but it's good that you know it now. <laughs> I absolutely will. Right. <laughs> I'm already fucking it up in my mind right now. <laughs> <laughs> pick bull seals, pick bull seals, and then the time comes and you go Siberian hamsters. <laughs> no, you'll be like, hey, we'll need a mammal. Bull seal, bull seal. Wait, it is a mammal, isn't it? I'd be right. Fuck. You, I fucked up my own joke. God damn it. Uh, <laughs> Pat, welcome back. You were uh, you were off for a minute there. You're back. Can you hear us? Everything good? Tech-wise? Yeah, just, you know, yeah, just having some technical issues. Right. I want to come back in. I want to come back in in a blaze of glory, though, man. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So, Bradley, uh, we, we've introduced this segment a couple weeks ago, mm-hmm. and the cat jumping out of the building made me think it was time to do another version of it. It's a segment that the Brosners love. It's a little game we like to play called Pat's Math. Pat's Math, Uh, Pat's Math, Pat's Math. All right, so, Will, why don't you pop on camera for this? So what I do here is I take some interesting facts about the animal kingdom. Mm -hmm. Then I do a whole bunch of math, and I create a little quiz for you guys. Okay. I bust out my pen. I'm going to keep track of the score. The whole time is, like, like pissed off and... (laughs) He's very angry. Yeah, he's sort of he's absolutely furious. furious. His furious. resting math bitch right. face is very strong. <laughs> yeah. So what we do here is we don't like we're not going to spend so too funny. much time going through the math, but uh, but uh, we'll come up with it. All right. Since Bradley's the guest, he'll go first on this first question. Right. So the cat jumped seventy feet to save itself from a fire. Mm-hmm. Okay. As a function of the height of the jump versus its body height. Right. So it the cat's height and how far it jumped. If Bradley could do the same thing, okay. how many stories from how many stories high would BTG be able to jump from a burning building and walk away unscathed to replicate what that cat did? Ooh. Wow. <laughs> and, and you're measuring the height of the cat from the ground to the shoulder or from the tail to the head? Yes. Ground to the shoulder yes. when it's standing on all fours. How many yeah. hands tall is the cat, as they say? Uh, I don't think I don't think anyone says that. Uh, I was going to say no one's ever measured you, a cat in hands. That's how you, that's measure, how you measure a horse. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but not cats. Yeah. Don't um, ride a cat. Bradley, how tall are you? I'm doing some calculations over. I'm here. about six I think four. He's tall. Six yeah. four. Mm. Fuck. So okay. I use I use six six for my math. So let's just go with that. Yeah, yeah that was you met me when I had hands. Yeah, so <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, Two inches. I, I think I'm shrinking too. So, uh, yeah, and we're going to say the cat, the shoulder's probably about a foot. So, I mean, basically it's six and a half times that. So, but I mean, I look, I've jumped out of a lot of planes and we used to say that the military, the impact from a military parachute is, which is much worse than a, than a sports parachute, jump does a lot as well. But the military parachute, which is designed to come down fast and straight as quickly as possible so it gets shot out of the air. That one is, they say it's like jumping off a two-story building. And I've done that okay. a bunch of times, and I just slapped it on the ground like a sleeping bag full of sheep heads. So I don't <laughs> think I could do very many stories at all. So two, I think, is really my my limit. But, but, but yeah. according to your according to your according to your math, the answer is ten and a quarter stories. <laughs> all right. Ten and a quarter, says BTG. Peter, what do you got? All right. Uh, I've got my calculator out here. I'm going uh, six stories. <clears throat> you know what? I think six. I screwed up. I think you're right for a tap. I think it's more like six and a half. Man, BTG, there's one thing you got to know about me. I'm always <laughs> fucking right. I'm going to go seven. Will. I'm going seven. Just straight yeah. price is right strategy here. God damn well, it. <laughs> nobody, nobody really embraced this math here. So at one foot tall, the cat survived a five-story jump. At six and a half foot tall, that means Bradley would be able to survive 
a 35 story jump, Shit. 34 stories to be exam- oh exact. Oh my God. So it would be the equivalent, if you had the same limbs and abilities as a cat, <laughs> jumping 488 <laughs> feet high, Landing, mm. walking away, and saying, "What were y'all worried about?" I That's think this it. should be the next military tech. By the way, they need to start working on this shit. Well, we do have cat a, arms, jumpsuits. Yeah. I there's something to be said for that. And you remember that that uh, Tom Cruise, Emily Blunt, something tomorrow, uh, Edge of tomorrow, tomorrow never dies. Uh, Edge, oh, oh Edge of tomorrow, Edge of tomorrow, and they had those robotic suits. You might be able oh, to yeah. do it. Um, mm-hmm. But I will say this. Back in early World War II, when the Germans were developing effective parach- uh, trooper assaults, the Russians did do some experiments at low altitude, at low velocity, in prop planes and dropped paratroopers without parachutes into snowbanks a couple of times. God, and what a nightmare. Now, we expect Jeez. to have, in the airborne forces, we expect to have 30% casualties from jumping into a contested zone. A drop zone, uh, their casualties were over 70%. And even by Russian <laughs> standards, that wasn't considered a success. And so they didn't try it again. But really harsh. <laughs> but this, is, this is at a time, Poor though. Poor bastards. Even, even the initial, the, I think the world's first really effective parachute assault was in Crete uh, by the German Schwalschenjäger. But remember, at this time, the parachute attached to the middle of your back, kind of like a cat. You came down on all fours. And after no the first shit. few Jeez. assaults, when everyone had broken arms and legs, all they did was cut up truck tires and give them elbow pads and knee pads and kept them going. It wasn't towards the end of the ward that they actually started attaching parachutes from the shoulders so you could land on your feet, execute the uh, the uh, eponymous yeah. parachute roll, and not end up smashed to pieces. But um, well, wait, how did they easier not to use study a rifle this? when your arms aren't broken? Very difficult. A lot easier. Well, how, why did they not study this like to begin with? They didn't know impact study. They were just like, let's just do it this way. This is uh, even there's a million was, other ways to do it. I mean, it. There, there were a lot of theoretical physicists even then, but this is at a time when you work things out through physical experimentation. <laughs> right in the end, like, yeah. let's Whoa. see what happens. So you know when you're a kid at school and they give you the egg and some drinking straws and tape and you got to create something. <laughs> a pack to, of Twinkies. Yeah, you yeah. got to like not break the egg. The paratroopers were the egg. That's how they went about it. Imagine. So here yeah. we go. Bradley wins that one. That's number one. Number two. Yeah, not because I'm right, if, though, but because I was the least wrong. You were the least wrong <laughs> Thank you. by far. Yeah, exactly. All right. If, if Will, right, <laughs> if Will weighed as much per foot of his body's height or length, let's say, right, if Will had the same density and weighed as much length. as a blue whale does mm. per foot of body height <laughs> or length, how <laughs> how many wills could the largest cargo plane in the world carry in one trip? I, no, I, I, go ahead. I know how much I weigh so and about how it. long think I am, and I have no idea. There's a I'll cargo just... plane, the biggest cargo plane in the world that can carry the most cargo. Oh. If Will weighed as much as a blue whale per foot of body length, how many wills could this cargo plane carry? How many wells? And, wills. Wills. How many wills? Will. And I'm yeah. six foot six foot five ish. So that's your length. Yep. Okay, go for it, Will, since you're you're the <laughs> Yeah, yeah. The, fucking Christ. You're the uh, star. You may as well just guess, man. man. Uh, uh I have no idea how big the world's largest car- cargo plane is. I'm gonna guess that it's like five hundred feet by a hundred feet. That's what I'm just going to make it But it's about the weight. It's about the right. weight. Yeah, but right? all, we're, yeah. And the size of the cargo plane. There's many variables. I, I'm just going to throw a number out here. There's no way to know. I'm going to say, uh, I don't know, 2 million. That's my number. I have no, I'm I don't going, even know if I'm even... Yeah. yeah. Sorry, go ahead, BTG. No, I, that was it. Just what? Like, yeah, I, I just... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's very right, complicated. BTG, you're up. It's very it's complicated. So complicated. Just throw a number out. Okay. So whales are what? Blue whales. Pat, you're not even going to give them the blue whale weight? It's like yeah, I, we have no, no idea. This is the fun. This is the anything. reveal. It's like 300,000 pounds, right? It's like 300 okay. tons. I feel like I'm in class. God okay. damn it. It's about, it's about 300 tons. Am I wrong? I'm probably wrong. I think you're right. I think you're right. Okay. You're wrong. No, you're wrong. Was, 100, I'll give you this. It's 100 180 tons. tons. 180 right. tons. Well, hang on. There's a range now. We're talking between the biggest and the smallest. I mean, 
No, that's not the biggest. That's the average, you know, what they list as a blue whale's typical. All right. Well, I, I choose to dream that a 300,000 pound. I like, I like BCG so, uh, where he's going here. Uh, because remember, this it. is, remember that this is the biggest animal that has ever lived. Let's be clear about that. Right. There's no, yeah. there's no ancient dinosaur or plesiosaur or Jurassic Park sequel with anything that comes close to a blue whale. So that's the biggest. Right. All right. So we just, I'm just going to be, keep it simple and say 200,000, 200 tons. Just keep it easy in my brain. Um, long, six foot. I've, I've been in some of the biggest planes in the world, so that's not a mystery. They can take about four, maximum, of four Abrams A1 battle tanks. And, okay. and I, we've also shipped in a whole group of elephants in them once. We, we hired a Russian transport to bring elephants from Thailand to Australia. And we had about six elephants, but we had more room. Okay. And I also know of a mission yeah. where they're supposed to bring 21 beluga whales from Russia to the Georgia Aquarium, but it got shut down for Peter reasons. But Interesting. So, and remember, they're in water tanks. I want to hear they're more in, about like, this. They're in, they're in yeah, fucking the water tanks a lot. They're yeah. in mini swimming pools. So you got a yeah, small... Yeah, yeah. Oh, medium-sized whale in a swimming pool. So there's a lot of weight. <laughs> I'm going to say, I'm going to say. like me when I take a bath. Uh, well, at least you couldn't even take one whale. Um, I'm going to say that it could take 24 wills. Okay. 24 wills. Retep. Guess. Well, I'm going to say that it could take 231 wills. Okay. Here's the math. Ready for this? A blue whale, on average, weighs 180 tons. That's 360,000 pounds. At 79 feet of length, it weighs 4,600 pounds per foot, <laughs> which means that at six foot six, Will, if he had the density of a whale, would weigh 30,000 pounds at six six, which means that the cargo plane would only be able to carry eight Wills, being able to carry 250,000 pounds. Think about I that. Win. Like when mm. you think about a whale, you go, "Yeah, it's huge." You're thinking about just this. Very th large. That it's, you know, it's so long. It's 80 feet long. Yeah. But for every foot of its length, it's crammed in 5,000 pounds of weight. That amazing. that amazes me. I've never thought about it like that. That's a lot. Uh, yeah. What's the circumference on a blue whale? Like how wide around are they? It's it's well, hard to even uh, imagine it. Relative to their size, they're actually quite narrow, but um, yeah, still right. obviously they almost look enormous. like an eel sometimes. Uh, when you see them from above, they're so long and skinny. Yeah. What I get from this is that Will is a fat bastard, and um, <laughs> yeah, that's something you can look into <laughs> apart from your math face. That's right. Me, All right. Me and Pat were talking about getting liposuction on our love handles today, so maybe you could join us. Uh, BTG, you too, if you're into that. Oh God, yeah. I'll, I'll, we, <laughs> we'll we get can, a group on. And then we can, and then we can, and then we can make some soap like Fight Club. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's, that's right. I like where your mind's at. <laughs> All right, here we go. Here's another one. I'll try and make this one a little easier. Yeah, that was the hardest Dude, math problem I, mean, I, I ever saw. Like yeah, oh my god! We're losing subscribers right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What are you doing? Were you up all night fucking with like a whiteboard, at, like fucking Goodwill <laughs> hunting? What's going on here? Like, and you're not giving us any it's, hints. You're like, you won't tell us like how right. much the blue whale weighs. Uh, sorry, sorry. I love you. Well, Ritap, based on the text you've been sending me, it seems like you've been having a lot of sex lately, and. <laughs> <laughs> So, Love where this is so going, baby. If Retep was able to reproduce, you know, they always say, you know, they're, they're having sex I'm like not. rabbits, right? Yeah. <laughs> so if, if Retep was able to reproduce like a European rabbit, how many kids would he have during his lifetime? Oh, I should know this one. Oh, shit. Right. He's going to have to go last then. I will take a stab at this. Um, what do you got? Because I do the actual physical motion that when I'm having sex is that of one of these European rabbits. So I'm assuming... Yeah. You have one of those little yeah. rabbit floral penises too with the petals. And a cotton tail. Yep. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and it's quick. It's over quickly. Very quick. Oh. I mean, I get mm -hmm. as much as much out. Uh, I'm going to say that I would have uh, fucking, uh, over my lifetime, 233 rabbits. Peter Rabbits. Oh, no. <laughs> Little Retep, yeah. 233 Retep offspring. <laughs> Will, yeah. what do you got? I'm going 2,033. Just, okay. just again, pure guess. 
I'm, sure, sure, sure. So I, I, I've never looked this up, but I know, I remember I wrote a book called Why Dogs Are Better Than Cats, um, which, got, <laughs> which, of course which, you did. which got me my first ever uh, death, death threats uh, because there's nothing more tolerant than a, a cat lover sitting at home on social media wearing elastic waisted pants and not caring about his poor punctuation. Um, so anyway, obviously those are threats yeah. I, took, I took I took very seriously. Uh, anyway, yeah. the point was I remember doing the math and working out that a pair of cats, which have a reproductive rate less than rabbits, could produce something like 100,000 kittens over four and a half years. So my guess Holy shit. is that is that if – it's assuming that every cat – Found a partner every time they were in estrus and and had a large litter. I'm going to say that even with the lifespan being what it is for most wild rabbits, I'm going to say 750,000 kittens. Holy shit, dude! I would love right. to spread my genetics around that. That much. that is a horrible thought. <laughs> Yeah, we don't we don't need you're gonna be, that. You're gonna sir. be fucking sending Peters into battle, set on fire, set just, towns on fire. I, I, I just see you like a like a broken sprinkler at a nightclub, just circle jerking. It's just a horrible <laughs> genetic distribution. Just a depressingly hand jobbing myself. <laughs> well, here's the quick math. The European rabbit on average has three hundred and sixty children during their nine year lifespan. So 40 children per year, a human male in the US lives an average of 78.54 years, meaning Retep would have 3,142 kids Fuck you, Will. during his life. No, <laughs> all right. That means Will wins that one. Are you, are you um, wait a minute, are you saying what they actually have or what was theoretically possible? No, no, this is based on what they actually have. So they have 360 offspring during their nine-year lifespan, only 15% of which survive the first mm. year. Mm. I also want to say, Peter is in his 30s. He's If he hasn't had any kids yet, as far as I know, so if we do that math, I might have been right on the number. Bring it down to 2,000. Yeah, that's a good point. I was right on nah. the number. He was mm. really also very generous this. of you to say that he's in his 30s. Um, right, <laughs> yeah, I don't one. know if that's true, but... Yeah, yeah. This I'd one's say, really fun. His, his, his yeah, it better be fun point. Mm-hmm. and simple. Fun and simple. No, nope, like people me. like the math. All right, I've seen Bradley Trevor Grieve run through the forest as he was chased by, actually it was just a, a small vole that was chasing him, but he ran very quickly. He's very swift. That said, <laughs> if Bradley Trevor Grieve could run as fast as the animal that runs fastest in relation to its body size, right? How long okay. would it take him to leave his house right now and run to Chicago? Oh, I'm going to go straight. I'm going to jump into that one because I think I know what the fastest animal relative to its size is. And Can you the, tell me? If you do, yeah. I'm just going to smash my computer and move. Well, it's okay. Wait, it's very where do you live? How about that? Where do you live? Uh, we're, we're, we're I'm, I'm in California, which is also yeah. home to that animal and is the California red mite. And you are correct. How did you know that? It's my job to know these things. <laughs> and and That's uh, so I, weird. And I think it can do something like 13 and a half body lengths a second or something crazy. Holy shit. And and um, yeah, absolutely insane. So if I could do that, and we'll just, for rounding out purposes, I'm six and a half feet tall, and this thing is like as small as the period at the end of a sentence. It's so <laughs> tiny. Yeah. Um, and also has the fastest change of direction in terms of physical modalities of anything that's ever lived. So I reckon wow. I could be in Chicago from California in about... I reckon about 17 minutes. Okay. Peter? Well, <clears throat> let me just start this off by saying uh, that I Googled how far is Chicago to California, and the first result says 638 miles, which is fucking absurd. So nope, I can't that's, calculate that's my math. Incorrect. I it know. Seven, it's ridiculous. I will tell you, it's 1,700 miles. I know. I've line. driven it. I've driven it. I was yeah. like, why is this mm. the first answer on Google? Anyway, so I can't, I can't uh, quite figure it out. But I'm just going to say, uh, and what's the question again? How long would it take him? Uh, yeah. I would say it's going to take him, uh, uh, let's say, an hour and a half. Okay. 90 minutes. Will? Man, 
I don't know. BTG so confident with that seventeen minute guess. I'm, I'm gonna go thirty. That. I'm gonna go thirty four minutes. <laughs> I'm gonna say his ma- right. he was close, but he had one very motherfucker long. just constantly prices right in our asses. BTG, I I know. that Fucking is that is very game show of you, motherfucker. <laughs> so you were correct. It is the Southern California Red Mite, which runs two hundred. Oh, sorry, three hundred and twenty-two lo- times its body That's length it per is. second. It's a crazy per number per second. Per second, three hundred and twenty-two wow. times the length of its body per second, which means Bradley at six and a half feet. Could run 2,100 feet in a second, which means he could run 24 miles in a minute. <laughs> That's running at 1,427 <laughs> miles an hour. He would be in Chicago in an hour, 22 minutes. An hour and a half. Thank you. Well nice done, work, buddy. Right. Slow clap from BTG. Well done. BTG, wow. so how now are you the most important. Uh, you know what? Yeah. I actually. What's the progress? Some would say I'm drinking too quickly. Oh my god, it's been <laughs> yeah. like five minutes. I told you I can't wait to see him in fucking. The problem 40 is the <laughs> my, my face is already getting all red, and uh, the problem yeah. the, the problem is that you 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 know you put in the Kahlua and it tastes like candy. I mean, yeah. it's, it's, exactly. It's, it's the vape pen of cocktails. I I, <laughs> I, I remember I remember uh, the last time we got together, and I and I. Got on early just to get things organized because I at that point I, I thought it was something where preparation mattered, and <laughs> yeah, how wrong so you I were. So I was a little bit tipsy to begin with, and I watched the show back on YouTube, which was hilarious. I was so drunk. I remember I, I'm not naming places that I went to. <laughs> Pat goes, "Where did you go in Madagascar to find those lizards?" And I'm like, "I don't know." Um, but <laughs> actually, on that point, I wanted to mention this time because it was such a good story. We were looking for these tiny lizards with the King Kong dongs. That's what we went to Madagascar for. To, I mean, not, not the dongs, but the lizards. And sure. And at that time, when we first talked about doing this some years ago, the record for the smallest lizard was on a place called Nosy Bay. And Nosy just means island in Malagasy, but Nosy Bay. And which is quite a popular tourist island by Madagascar standards in the north. And there was this uprising, this suspicious activity that foreigners were harvesting organs from local children and a couple of tourists Jeez. were tortured, cut to pieces, and then burnt Jesus. on a tire fire. And so oh. you can imagine my relief when an even smaller lizard was found on an island called Nozihara, about uh, 80 miles to the southwest. And that's that's where we were going, but we got cut off because of the wet season and the bubonic plague, uh, which <laughs> made conditions challenging. Anyway, that's the story behind that. Which I was Is that drunk the lizard tell- you were looking for? That is the one, uh, Bruxia, Bruxia micro. And and uh, I was too drunk to tell you last time, and in about 15 minutes, I'll be too drunk to tell you this time, so I've said it, and now you know. <laughs> now you've said it. This, yeah. uh, uh, unfortunately, we weren't we weren't recording there, but that's okay. We'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll ADR it in. That's for the that, best. That California red mite, uh, is that, is that, was that, Accurate? Is that what you just said? What was the answer to that animal? I, I can't remember the Indeed. exact name. Okay, so was that from the, uh, the what the stuff you did on the tiny animals that you were searching for? A little for, giants on Animal Planet. Yeah, which you can now watch on Discovery Plus. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, I love Discovery Plus. By the way, it's fucking it's, awesome. It's, it's going the best. amazing. And didn't they just buy Warner Brothers or something? And my, like, they have just, so much shit on there, dude. Like oh, everybody, there's something for everybody. Out of control. HBO now belongs to Discovery. It's amazing. Um, and Warner Brothers Studios. I don't know what's going on in the world. But um, <laughs> so no, it wasn't for that. Um, but it was. I mean, it came up. I think in the context of how fast the things. But it's just yeah. one of those weird facts that I couldn't get out of my head. I got very interested in tiger beetles, and oh. tiger beetles are the fastest of all beetles, and they're the fastest of all insects, um, and which makes them faster than everything relative to their size, except for this little bastard. But for a long time, crazy. There was a uh, there's this uh, there's many different tiger beetles all over the world. There's some beefy, angry, heavy set ones you get in South Africa through these beautiful iridescent green spotted ones you get throughout the United States. And in Australia, they're less attractive, these little gray ones with very skinny legs, but they're the fastest of all in central Australia. And if Mm. you did the math on that, it worked out that they're doing something ridiculous, like six or 700 miles an hour relative to their size, which was unbelievable until until a a, a researcher uh, produced the data on the California, uh, Southern California red mite. And it just blew that out of the water. And I, and I was doing a book 
called uh, The World is Great and I Am Small about insects. Uh, mm-hmm. Beautiful mm-hmm. little. It's kind of a parody of one of those Catholic prayer books, uh, but from the point of view of an insect. <laughs> oh, yeah. On. Yeah. Hang on. Give me a second. I got a copy of my. He's got a copy. Dude, Pat, I'm terrified of these fucking mites. Are these things common? Are they oh. running around around us? Here it is. He's got it's it. Everywhere. They're it all over your house. So uh. that was the book that I'm producing, and this came up <laughs> in that research, and I just it's just stuck in my head ever since. I was just so amazed at, at how fast this thing is and also how Fuck it can yeah. change direction in a – not a nanosecond, in a picosecond, 10 to the minus 9. Unbelievable. Blah, 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 blah. Dude, these are wow. like the these are like the unidentified flying uh you know, unidentified flying fucking crafts that we see in the air, except in the bug world, man. If yeah. imagine you're a bug and you see one of these things fucking flying around like or zipping around just doing weird shit like that. You're fucking crazy. Well, I tell you what's even crazy is that at that speed, particularly for the predatory insects and uh and arachnids like these guys, particularly the uh, well, not the mite. The mite's obviously a parasite, but but the mm. uh, tiger beetle is this yeah. so fast that even though they have superb eyesight that's much better than ours, it's too fast to focus on a particular object. So they have to set and target their prey and then attack it and they're Dude. blind until they hit it. Um, that is so fucking yeah. crazy, man. They're like. You know, they're like uh, like the kind of shit that we try and build, like within our airplanes and stuff with missiles or whatever, mm. you know, something that locks on and, you know, you can't see it or track it or whatever, but it just knows it's there. It senses it's there. How does it lock on? Like by heat or something? No. Well, in this instance, it's purely a, it's a visual targeting system. But as I said, the system has to turn off. And so when you see them. Uh, they often like to get down to sandy areas and pick off sand flies, so they ah, can they can good. get to the fly and eat it before the fly can actually take off. But you'll actually see these little short bursts, and and they look like they're just going crazy. And they but they're actually retargeting every single time. I'll try and uh, I'll get the glasses on. I'll try and find this stat because it's the kind of nerdy stuff that you would love. It's the kind of stuff our listeners will love yeah. too. Yeah. Anyway. Well, that's that was sort of that was sort of the premise of Little Giants, right? It was kind of this Pat's math segment. It was <laughs> taking these superpowers of these tiny things and then extrapolating them out into bigger things. Yeah. Which is super cool. It's I think a lot of the Brosners would would like the show. Yeah. I liked it a lot. Well, don't you remember when you sent me that email about how we were going to steal BTG's uh, idea and use it on the podcast? <laughs> Never happened, obviously. Uh, <laughs> but BTG, I did just read. I mean, good news for people who like watching these types of shows. So, yeah, the Discovery uh, Warner Media merger, um, they're creating this super conglomerate uh, streaming service. And the, re- the what was reported is that they're going to spend $30 billion on content next year, which is mm. more than even Netflix. Yeah. Uh, who's planning to spend $22 billion. So pretty awesome for people like me, you, and Forrest who like to get out and have adventures yeah, while because, someone else pays for yeah, it. Yeah, because because that's definitely the line. She will definitely come to wildlife programming for sure. Uh, a few billion <laughs> of it, for sure. Yeah, the sad state of affairs these days is that if you want to do something in the wildlife and adventure space, the first question that they ask is, who's the celebrity? Yeah. Right? Well, can we get the guy who plays uh, Thor to go do a show? <laughs> can we get Robert Downey Jr. to go look at Beatles? Uh, yeah, but I mean, you yeah. know, the, the, the whole idea behind what, what even what we're doing here is and what happens now in today's fucking society, because, you know, my one track narrow mind knows about this shit. It's, it's all about your fan base, dude. Like, y- you got to get fucking people behind you and, and they'll fucking you don't need fucking these companies to fund this shit anymore, man. It's just about getting in True. front of enough eyeballs with, you know, good enough content. And, and if it's good, man, it, it'll fucking work out. You just got to have a guy like me to fucking do it. All that other to shit you guys don't know how handle to do. All the, te- the technical look at, issues. Look at me like your fucking media conglomerate. That's how you should treat me with respect and fucking grace. You understand? Wow, there's some, well, some very big assumptions we, in that statement. 
Before we segue off of, uh, about. off of Little Giants, um, <laughs> something was in the news that has, I, th- I think, fascinating in the insect world. We talked uh, on the last podcast about the cicada bloom mm. that's coming where billions and billions of cicadas are going to emerge across, I think, 13 states in the U.S. Yep. But uh, some news dropped yesterday that a bunch of the cicadas, because, you know, there, you have some entomologists who are digging in the dirt and studying these cicadas, which are getting ready to come out in mass, right? Mm. And a lot of them are infected with a fungus called uh, Massospora cicadina. It mm. is a yellow fungus that uh, grows inside the insect's bodies. But what, it, oh. what happens is this, this fungus creates oh my God. Has psilocy- psilocybin in it, which is mushrooms. the active drug in Wait, magic so, mushrooms. So Will's right? just brought up a picture of this. This thing takes over the entire body oh, of the man. cicada. If you want to see what this looks like, come to the YouTube and check this out. Man, it's fucking crazy. Yeah. It's just covered, so it has like covered psilocybin in, foam, in it. Almost. Yeah, yeah, yeah like, like insulation in a house, just all over a fucking cicada. Mm. But, but get this, right? So it's got the psilocybin in it, and then as this sort of grows on the body and inside the body... It then produces this chemical. Uh, it's an amphetamine called cathinone, which is the same amphetamine in the drug, the street drug, bath salts. Oh my God! This fun. So we've got what, some billions of cicadas on bath salts that are about to emerge for the first time Whoa. in seventeen years, <laughs> and the ones that have already come out. The sort of, you know, when bath salts was the big craze in the U.S., it was a lot of people biting and trying to eat other people. It's putting the cicadas in this mania where they're reproducing so feverishly that their genitals are breaking off and falling off. This is a wow. fucking horror movie, this dude. This is so Ami Hama. Yeah, I don't... <laughs> what do we do with this, this information? Is, I just... What, what I love about that is it's a, it's a, it's a two-phase narcotic. So you have the magic mushrooms <laughs> equivalent, and then you have, like, super ecstasy. And so... You know, you're hallucinating and you want to procreate with every living thing. I mean, it's, it's, it seems to be a, a toxic mix. It's like one of those rules you should never break. Like never take a, never take a sleeping pill and a laxative. It's just one of those things you, <laughs> Definitely. Just, you just don't do. And that's extraordinary. Perfect, uh, but I mean, we could argue uh, a very compelling case that all life on this planet is purely a vehicle for fungus and bacteria. But this is one of the sure. more violent. Um, I mean, it's, it's a form of body possession, really, isn't it? I mean, you've weaponized, yeah. you've weaponized the sexual organs of a cicada, um, that's, which is no, no small feat. And you gotta, it's pretty, pretty wild, yeah. Think about it. You're coming out. I mean, these motherfuckers have been buried for 17 years. I was reading about this shit, obviously, because it's all over the goddamn news. And... Uh, these like they were talking about how the world has changed in 17 years as far mm. as just like the amount of light and 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 things that was, actually have, so like you think like the cicadas are going to come out and be like where's the tape player and the VHS well these what are cicada- you talking about what are you talking about no 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 I I was <laughs> lots changed in 17 are you a fucking years. are you are like you they're going to come out idiot? and be like I thought a Ford Taurus was still going to be on the road. I literally was in the middle. I was literally in the middle of saying, you jackass, that that they were talking about how things like the amount of light, which do affect insects, okay? You understand? Has changed and it's, and the percentage is wildly, dramatically increased in 17 years. You motherfucker. Are you talking about light pollution or are we still on some sort of um, Austin Powers type sequel idea? I, I'm talking about light pollution and yeah. Austin Powers like sequel. I don't know what that means, but I'm talking about both, baby. <laughs> Fuck off, Pat. I, 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 I'm just worried these cicadas are going to come out in their true religion jeans and uh, tap out <laughs> t-shirts and be like, oh shit, there we go. But but so they're coming out. You got to imagine these things have been underground for 17 years. They're coming out to all this new tech. The internet's out there. They're going to be trying to use these phones. Bluetooth. And, and all this light everywhere. And then, boom, you're saddled with this fungus. Boom, you're saddled with bath salts. You're fucked. What's going on? It's like God is trying to fucking kill these animals and then make them extinct. There's no way they survive this. This is the last bout of cicadas that will ever happen. Thank you. Well, I, I think what's brilliant about this strategy for this uh, fungus 
is that it's harnessing uh, a process that's already underway. So the time that they were spent underground, obviously in a larval form, um, and they're eating and they're waiting for the right environmental uh, triggers to come to the surface, and they purely come to the surface to procreate. So they've only mm-hmm. come up to have sex anyway. So they're already, you know, they've already swiped right on life. And now <laughs> they've got this fungus, which has turned that, dialed that up to 11. Um, and they've got the beer goggles on now. Um, right. You know, yeah. with, the, with, with, the, with the magic mushroom element. So they just stop caring. And, <laughs> um, and, and, and arguably, uh, you know, one could argue that in the process you'd have to think, that the fungus wouldn't get every single male or female that they procreated with, but I don't know. Could they lay their eggs and not be affected? I don't know. A terrific way to transmit the spores of this fungus, though, and I, I one of the things that creeps fungus, this kind of invasive fungus is one of the things that I, I, I feel is a true horror story that's never been utilized effectively by Hollywood because having <laughs> this fungus grow through your body and come out and take over your oh. brain and everything else, yeah. um, you know, everyone talks about the, the health benefits of cordyceps, but if you actually look at how cordyceps work, it's so revolting. Um, and they take over an insect's brain. They usually get them to climb to altitude in the canopy of a forest, wherever they are. And then they lock on with their jaws and their feet. And then when they die, the spores from the cordyceps that come out of their body like sort of uh, fractal reindeer antlers can drift down over the forest and infect even more insects. I think it's one of the mm. most horrific uh you know to my mind anyway one of the most horrific forms of reproduction and i come from tasmania and we have some of the most extraordinarily violent mating rituals we're at home to some of the there's some cordyceps coming through a grasshopper i mean his life is yep. very ordinary at that point mm-hmm. and um so we we're home to some of the few remaining carnivorous marsupials so everybody knows about you know koalas and kangaroos we have the uh, the diasterids, so we have the Tasmanian devil, we have the tiger quoll, and we have um, we have these little little mice like creatures called antichinus. Now they're also in some other parts of Australia, but the ones in Tasmania are obviously superior in many ways. Anyway, of course. these little monsters, <laughs> these little tiny think of it as like a shrew uh, that you'd actually like to hang out with. They have these little tiny mouse like <laughs> structures, but their mouth is like a tiger shark's, and it's just uh-huh. sharp little jagged teeth, not the shape of the mouth, I mean the teeth themselves, mm, and they're very right. aggressive. Um, but what's extraordinary is they have a reproductive pattern that's not unlike, say, salmon. They're what we call semel paris. They only breed once in their lifetime, and they have a very short lifespan of just over a year. And what happens is uh, there's a certain hormonal trigger. All the females come into estrus at once, and all the males, boom, that's it. And their testicles swell to many times their normal size. Their body is just pumped with testosterone. And they will literally stop eating and drinking and do nothing but have sex until they suffer from internal bleeding and gangrene. Um, and it's, it's a nightmare. And, and all the males die. They, they literally fuck themselves to death. All the males <laughs> die. And the females live long enough to give birth to the next generation. And shortly after they die... And and that's how we do it down under. Yeah, and that's how they do it at spring break in Daytona Beach too. You in know Daytona I mean? Beach, even during COVID pandemic. <laughs> I said, I was, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I just my hats off to you. That is a, that is another level of stupid. <laughs> I definitely want to see a movie where they do a mashup of the you know an animal that has the sexual behavior of the Enchinitis from Tasmania specifically, not Australia. It's but the enchiladas, the enchiladas not enchilada. from uh, <laughs> yeah. Tasmania, and then mixed with this uh, this genital cybacillin uh, bath salt fungus that is in, infecting the cicadas, because that would be a fucking I'll another, movie. I'll tell you another one that's equally horrific, and uh, I want to get the name. I think it's saculina, but it's a type of a parasitic barnacle that attaches onto European green crabs which are now all over the world because they get carried in the bilge water of ships and, and so on and so forth. Anyway, when they latch onto a male, they, 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 they actually take hold over its genital opening. They castrate it. Sounds terrible so already. So they give it an involuntary sex change. Yeah. yeah. And, and then they rewire its brain to think that it's a female. 
and they get it to climb up onto a higher spot on the ocean floor and broadcast, which is to say disseminate, tr- get out the uh, the offspring of the little barnacle. And um, so, the, yeah, I think, I think his nickname is the Castrator Barnacle. Christ, um, man. But I think in terms of horrific parasites, that's got to be, it's got to be right up there. How lucky are we that there's no parasite that just tries to attack, attack our genitals, like on the rag? I mean, unless, well, I guess there is. But I mean, like, that tries to just castrate you and make you turn you into a female so that it can fool other people into coming and fucking you or whatever it wants to do. Yeah. I'm just saying, we're pretty fucking lucky as humans. That's all I'm saying. I just, by the way, Googled antichinous testicles because I wanted to see, uh, you know, these giant swollen testicles. They have like seven testicles. Yeah. The antichinous. I, sh- I should have like mentioned this, that. It's a whole big group of these giant, it's like half the body is made up of these huge swollen testicles. Those poor bastards. <laughs> it's just, they're bred to fuck, man. I, I don't, yeah, I mean, I just, I don't know whether they'd be pitied or envied, really. It's, uh, <laughs> and, it's and, 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 and not in your to, condition, not right and, now, after that getting, cocktail you've had. And, and getting back to, you know, the idea of Rattet, you know, broadcasting <laughs> his genetic material at a club. You know, could you imagine if he was as well endowed as an antichinous? I mean, no, I, listen, I've God. got 14 testicles. You don't want to fuck go. with me. Only one of them works, but I've got 14 for some ungodly <laughs> reason. I don't know why. <laughs> anyway, the antichinists, they're a very small, very, uh, very quick, uh, very bitey little uh, guy. They're quite adorable. You can see how tiny that one is. There are about half a dozen uh, species uh, in Australia. And uh, oh, no, that's, a, that's, a, that's a mother with a pouch brood. Mm. Um, oh, okay. Oh, yeah, they're marsupial. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're, they're one of the. I think they're the smallest marsupial. But keep in mind, as I said, there, there's a look. There's a mature female with brood, and you see she's not even the length of a man's thumb. Now, unless that's Andre yeah. the Giant, you get an idea that's a pretty small animal. But there yeah. are some. So in Tasmania, for example, we have the dusky antichinus. That's what you're looking at right there. There's also the yellowfoot antichinus. And then there's the silver antichinus, which is up in Queensland. But they're all quite a small animal, no bigger than a shrew. Interesting. Interesting. Here's here's a something. I mean, the animal kingdom is so amazing, and obviously that's why we do a podcast about it. And Bradley, why you've written a thousand books about it. Quick question: You don't have you have ten seconds to think about your answer. Everyone gets to go. What is the strangest thing in the animal kingdom? Whether it's an ability, a power Ooh, that an animal God, has, though, just the it? physical form. If you had to pick one, where you're like, I'll this one first. has just always stuck with me as the craziest thing. Go ahead. I'll go first while Bradley thinks on this. There, there is a jellyfish that is essentially immortal. Uh, I forget which one sure. it is, but basically, yeah. it's, actually, when it, it's literally it's literally called the immortal jellyfish. Go on, the, yeah. <laughs> so the immortal jellyfish. Um, but this thing, basically, when it gets damaged or attacked in some way, I guess from what I've read, it reverts back into its into being like a, a newborn jellyfish, and then it grow. It's just it's just a baby again. And that's indefinite. And it just constantly goes and goes. You have an immortal fucking animal that lives on the earth. It's fucking fascinating. I love that. That's a and good that's, one. That behavior is, is also true of some other, we call it kinoderms or stomach projectors. So sea cucumbers and so forth. And as a couple oh, of those, shit. That, sea cucumbers that they, can, too? they can literally dissolve into a transparent liquid and then regrow from a single cell. Are you uh, fucking serious? Yeah. Yeah, that it's remarkable. is wild. I know, I know. Um, but yeah, people misunderstood. They thought they could dissolve into the gel and then reassemble, uh, but no, they can't. They they have to start off from. So you it's it, you get to be you again. We assume we don't know what kind of mental processes or knowledge yeah, yeah. or memories or aspirations a sea cucumber has. I mean, it's basically uh, yeah. a, a glorified yeah. Christmas turd. But <laughs> we don't we don't know. But it's you. So let's just say, for example, it is you again. But you've got to start off as a zygote and then become a baby and then grow up and have the same, make the same poor life choices you've already made, Ratep, yeah, in, order to, in yeah. order to be that person. You know, I, th- I think about that a lot. Totally. Like, I wonder what would happen if I was cloned. Would I be any smarter or would I just make the same poor decisions? That's I, I, I think about it's, it. I'm, so <laughs> well, you would, you would live your life vicariously through your cell phone because you're be- now being raised in this generation and you just end up being an obese turd. Thank you. <laughs> 
I appreciate that. Yeah. I'm not sure That's why, not, why the beast turd is, is better than a slim hip turd. I, don't, I feel like turds are <laughs> yeah. turds. It's, it's a class that we That's accept. True. Obesity um, used to be something that a woman looked for in a man. It, 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 it displayed virility and uh, it worked wealth. For Henry, it worked for Henry VIII. <laughs> sure did. And, All right, do you have yours ready, BTG? Oh, what is your man, craziest thing in the animal kingdom? Uh, it's, it's, it's tough, but I'm just going to go with what I'm thinking right now, and, uh, and I reserve the right to have a different answer every time you ask me this question. Um, yep. some of, there's so many, but one of the things that I love are, uh, Yeti crabs. And okay. are you familiar yep. with Yeti crabs? We I'm are, not, yeah. I'm not. Pat We've is, talked about but it. I'd love so, to hear about them. It's a small, uh, it's a small crab, almost looks like lobster, like it has a, 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 almost an elongated carapace. There are a couple different species. They're relatively new to science. Uh, a number of new ones get discovered every year. Uh, but here are the important qualities about them that I find interesting. Is first of all, they exist at bone crushing depths. And I find that amazing. Um, then their, their unusual physiology, you see the, the, the long arms with the pinches, but the hairy arms which they get there now. Now this one, specimen which you see on YouTube, but you should check it out if you can. It's got, it's quite a, a pale color. It's almost white. It's like a light yellow. Um, it's, it's, here is an armored crustacean built to withstand incredible pressure. And yet it lives above these geothermal vents at the bottom of the sea. It doesn't use its pinches for anything really other than self-defense and mating. The arm hairs are everything. And so it waves its arm hairs over these geothermal vents. The temperature attracts certain types of bacteria which get caught in the arm hairs. And then it licks its arm hairs. And that's how it survived. <laughs> and it's such, it's such an extraordinarily complex way of yeah. eating. And we talk about, you know, bivalves, you know, clams and oysters as, as the, as the filters of the sea. And you think of filter feeders, you would think of water rushing through things, you know, mm -hmm, and getting mm -hmm. caught in the animal siphons. But no, in this case, it's just waving its hairy arms about. So like, you, imagine you're at a baseball game and you just kind of, <laughs> Wave your arms about, and people throw hot dogs and popcorn and cracker jacks. In, and you just sort of, it's kind of awesome. Now I say this, and then he licked it. Well, yeah. I don't have a lot of, I, you know, we we have a. Generally, our family is is a little bit anarchic, and we like to raise our daughter as a wild creature. And so far, it's going pretty well. But nice. one of, there's only one rule in the house, and that's don't eat any kind of of crunchy food in the bed because I am a walking fire hazard. <laughs> And it just gets lodged <laughs> in my chest or back hair. And then I'm going to have yeah. some sort of infestation. I don't even know about Absolutely. it. And I don't yeah. know why. <laughs> so I, so Yeti crabs are one of the strangest things. And I just want to shoehorn in what I think is one of the weirdest processes in the natural world. Are you familiar of the story of the blue butterfly and the red ant? Negative. Nah. Is that a it's children's like, book that you wrote in the 80s? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it was huge in Germany. Early 90s. Um, <laughs> no, it's, 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 I know it sounds super lame, but it just isn't. So normally butterflies and, and ants are mortal enemies in so much as butterflies are basically flying snacks. Um, <laughs> and ants are just voracious and committed, um, predators. And yeah, yeah they're yeah. basically six legged sociopaths. So they won't stop <laughs> until they've eaten the entire world. That's their aspiration. So. <laughs> But the reproduction of these blue butterflies, it just makes no sense. That's what I love about it. So basically, the life cycle is this. Blue butterflies, they mate, they lay eggs on a leaf, no big deal. Larvae hatches, eat some of the leaf, fine, nothing interesting so far, until you realize the leaf of this plant is directly above a trail of red ants. So okay. it's like hanging a baby crib, you know, out of a plane or over a freeway or over a shark pool or something. It just makes no sense. It's just very poor choice in family planning. <laughs> and, and then this suicidal little fat larvae of the butterfly deliberately rolls off the leaf onto the ground in the path of the red ants, which you think, okay, it's dead. Let's try again. Yeah. But, what, but what happens is the butterfly larvae actually exudes a scent that mimics the scent of the baby ants, the ant larvae. In oh, fact, wow. a queen ant. And so the red ants grab this larvae, take it back to their home, and then it, because it's uh, – I said exudes the scent of a queen ant. That, I misspoke. The scent of a baby ant larvae, but it makes a little noise of a queen ant. So now all the ants in the ant colony 
commit to feeding and fattening up these butterfly larvae, which take over and in some cases even Holy eat, shit. eat the ant larvae nearby. And then, you know, months later, they form a chrysalis inside the ant colony and they hatch. And before their wings inflate with fluid, they crawl out of the hole into the sun, inflate their wings and fly away. And to me, it's one of the most extraordinary systems I've, 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 I've ever heard of, of how, I mean, you hear about different types of birds that put their eggs in other birds' nests and so forth and, and yeah. the ad- adoption of weird animals. But this, I, I've never could imagine using your enemy to raise your children. Brilliant. <laughs> well, dude, I mean, it's, it's nuts to think that, because I think about like, you know, just the order of life, you know, I, I grew up like Catholic Christian. I never really gave a shit about it. I still don't like, I'm not religious or anything, but when you think about things like this and then, and on the bigger scale, like human beings, like we build these giant cities that we plan out with our brains and like all this stuff. This is like, this is as fucking incredible as that as like built planning and building a whole city like this whole process this elaborate fucking thing and it's just natural dude it is fucking wild man that is crazy to yeah, me yeah i mean it's the, the garden of eden man this was that's how it all started you know i don't i i don't know what you're talking <laughs> about i we I just lost read the one Bible we just lost one christian broster i'm sorry i, I just i feel like there are catholics <laughs> all over the world just shaking their head at you right now with <laughs> listen, I listen. I fucking did it for eight years, right? Granted, I was a kid. I, I used to pray. I used to literally like pray about I, things like. Oh, I will say this: like I, I still pray every time I take off and land on an airplane. I say my Hail Marys, my Our Fathers, my Glory Bees. It makes me feel better, and at that moment, I believe in God. There you yeah. go. Well, I'm, I sure, used to I'm pray. sure there is an yeah. all-powerful deity. He appreciates your your selective submissions. I'm sure he exactly. Really, he's like, thank you, <laughs> exactly. selective submissions. Thank you, thank you for not clogging up my prayer inbox, Deluca. Right. Can we fucking Only hire BTG? Important. Can we just hire BTG to write like like slogans for us? I mean, I've never heard so many funny like two three word things in there's, my life. There's a reason he's a professional writer. I think. <laughs> I, think I, I was be before I. I, I was before I started drinking this bucket of nightmares. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Here we go. That first, that first half went down so easy, but this last half, I'm, I'm struggling. It's, it's going down it's, like the chocolate milk that it is. Yeah. So you, you're drinking, you're, just to put us in a context, you're drinking a, a mason jar full of, uh, of black Russian. The mason jar mm. is at least 32 ounces. I mean, it, it's twice the size of a regular it's, fucking well, it's a beer. Double, it's a double mason jar. Yeah, yeah it's, a it's huge. a double mason. It's 32 yeah. ounces, dude. Yeah, but fucking... come on. This is this is a special occasion. It's, uh, Fuck it's, yeah. It's, fr- it's Wild Times uh, Monday, listen, dude. I'm not putting the guy down. I'm fucking, <laughs> I, I'm in awe, dude. He's my God right oh, now. My I'll tell you that much. It is funny. It is. I just, you know, I, I think... Uh, I mean, I'm basically one ingredient short of ketamine right now. It's it's, 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 it's pretty it's pretty potent. It's pretty potent. <laughs> one ingredient short of ketamine. Fuck. Uh, All right. Well, hey guys, I did need to mention something to both of you, and it's it's pretty important. Oh God, let's let's not do any more fucking Pat's math, please. My brain can't handle. No, it. no, it's not that. It's that it's time for, for the battle royale. Oh, <laughs> BTG has come up with one. He was up late last night thinking about it, pacing back and forth, sweating as he's wont to do. I'm sweating right now. <laughs> what do you got? <laughs> what do you got? So I've uh, I've only been in one battle royale, which I won convincingly. Um, and I thought, the what can I do to did. make you it did. interesting even more? Because, you know, it's like you've already climbed Everest. Now what? And... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So now it's yeah. time to, to handicap. So what I thought was the same as same as the last time I was on, and that was you pick fifty mammals, uh, fifty reptiles, fifty birds. Okay. okay. Although I'd like to open up reptiles to herpetofauna. So in other words, herpetofauna includes both amphibians and reptiles. Okay. okay? Fifty okay. each. So fifty herps, fifty mammals, fifty aves, and it's battle royale. It's a controlled setting. It's a you know. Temperate climate inside a dome, so you can't hide. It's you've got to just slug it out. But here's yeah. the trick: the trick is you pick one each of those, but you can also allocate the quality of another species. So add another superpower to your 
super animal. So, for example, Ooh. you might say, okay, I'm picking, for example, let's just say you, you were going with, with herpetofauna, and you might say, okay, I'm picking a giant uh, tortoise, you know, so a radiata tortoise from the mm. Seychelles. Okay, huge tortoise. But I'm going to give it the uh, little glass teeth of a Sicilian, you know, these amphibious like worm type things that rip the skin okay. off their mother. That might that is a stupid choice. It's a very Retepian choice, but you could do that. But does the superpower have to be from the same category? So does my mammal yes. have to take a mammal's? This is a hard yes. one. Hold, hold uh, on, though. Hold, hold this on. This is good. Yes, I love this. I love yes, it. it I love it a lot, but I, I do uh, want to point out that I don't know shit about animals. So you don't have can, to point that out. That's, that's can very we well known. <laughs> can we do it so that we can pick one superpower that is for the overall team, so we don't have to pick a suit? Because I, then I no, have to pick. Fucking, absolutely not. No, 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 you can just lose. We, and we derive we derive pleasure from your perpetual struggle. So you know, Ratep, you can. We'll give you this. You can just take the superpower of herpes on every <clears throat> one of your animals, since you always end up getting herpes on your team. I've uh, literally done it once, maybe twice. Also, <laughs> fuck you for not even considering my request. Uh, I am part of this podcast. You can eat I my asshole. I can't wait to fucking destroy you too. Let's go. <laughs> All right. Also, by the way, it's 50 herps, 50 birds, and 50 mammals. Correct. That's correct. All right. I'm going to go first. Retep's going to go last so we can give him some time to Google some things here. Good. No, Google I'm not it. Googling. I'm going straight off the top of my dome piece, motherfucker. Oh, that's not good. All right. <laughs> Here's what I'm going to do. In a fight, as we know, uh, you can watch lots of them on YouTube, bar fights. Um, sometimes I do that till very late in the morning. Mm -hmm. um, intimidation is very, <laughs> very important, right? Good, good. So I'm going to start with my herp. I'm going to go with a Nile crocodile. The reason I'm okay. doing this, it's not because they're fast. I they want them to yeah. surround me, right? So I'm going to keep them as sort of the 50 creatures that are surrounding me so that as your forces come in, I feel really good about it. So I'm going to go with 50 Nile Crocs, but I'm going to give them the power of a horned lizard, Ooh. which, as we all know, can shoot blood out of its eyes to intimidate other animals. So imagine you mm. come up on 50 Nile Crocs, you're getting close, you're like, oh, maybe, and then they start spraying blood out of their eyes like a horned lizard. Your animals are going to give up. I'm going to be the last one standing. That's my first pick. Mm. Mm. Bradley. I, that's, a, that's, a, <laughs> Bradley. that's actually a, yeah, yeah. That's a, a yeah, great choices, uh, Luca. That's actually a still from my show. Um, really? Ones. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. So, um, look. You pick Nile crocodiles every time, and I tell you, don't do that because they're neither the biggest nor the most aggressive crocodile. That's the Indo-Pacific uh, estuarine crocodile. Never sure. mind that. Once they get out of water, their, their most powerful form of locomotion, their tail, is inert. So basically what you have is a leather lounge chair without legs. Um, again, <laughs> makes no sense. Also, as an... Shooting also, blood out of their eyes. Thank also, you. Also, as an expert... On horned lizards, having captured them for my show, Little Giants. I'll tell you why their blood is toxic. Not poisonous, just toxic. They uh -huh. eat these uh, these poisonous uh, and, and distasteful weaver ants, and like the monarch butterfly consuming noxious plants, it enters their bloodstream. So the blood coming out of their eyes, unpleasant. I have tasted it, and it immediately made me want to retch, and I did uh -huh. retch, uh, yeah, but good, it isn't going to kill anybody. So now you basically have <laughs> a, a, a very expensive... Uh, 50 legless Barker lounges covered in, in pungent blood. Great work. Great work. Yep. I'm going to go a different me. direction. Yep. Agreed. Agreed. You've gone Protecting with herps me. first. I'm going to go with Aves. I'm going to go with birds. Okay. I'm going to surprise you on this one. I'm not going to go big at aggro. I'm going to go very small. Okay. I'm going to have 50. I'm going to have 50 ruby throated hummingbirds. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. But I can't wait for the special ability. The I can't superpower. wait. <laughs> and remember, we can make they can make him do whatever we want. Your your yeah. crocodile surrounded you. Okay, I'm gonna the superpower I'm bringing in is the Papua New Guinea and poison birds. Okay, and these are birds that have a neurotoxin in their feathers, and oh, all God. of my hummingbirds are suicidal, 
a mag, <laughs> the only job is to fly into the throats of all your giant carnivores, <laughs> paralyzing them and killing them. I yeah. quit. It's over. I can't win this. <laughs> no, no, that's that, that. He wasted his pick. Ritep, you're up for two. <laughs> well, I don't give a shit what you have to say. Uh, I'm picking humans because they're mammals. You can eat my okay. dick. All right, cool. Primates, I'm picking yeah, humans. Right. So Make my it. mammal is a human, and uh, they uh, are going to have the special ability of a another mammal. They will be able to run at the speed of a cheetah and use their human brains to do whatever the fuck. A humans do Ooh, 50 of them smart they're a team they're a team of humans they can get together in groups we are unstoppable we will build weapons we okay. will plan we will decimate these birds we'll put up defenses shields the crocodiles are ridiculous as forest always says are the dumbest creatures on the shooting on the earth. blood i, I shooting don't even blood. know why you would pick that they barely they barely come out of the fucking water we'll stomp their snouts we'll take why them make, with duct tape they won't even be able their, to open their mouths make your picks don't worry about my picks the bros nerds will decide Side. No, I didn't. I have one more. I just, so he, Wait, he, BT, BT. Uh, uh, and let me just let me just go over this one just to understand. In uh-huh. the context of what we're talking is the battle royale of, of animals, and you've chosen uh-huh. humans, so it's a primate. Yeah. That's fine. As everyone knows on this show, anyway, humans mm-hmm. didn't evolve from from primates. We evolved with primates from God. Oh, with okay, okay that's fine. Uh, but with with <laughs> primates, so we're part of that same. So basically, they come into this as animals, which we which base and they're super fast. So, which yep. means they're naked, okay? They don't come in wearing true. your true religion jeans and what was the, <laughs> nope. the, the tap matter. out shirts. So, yeah. you, basically what you said is I'm going to have 50 streakers run across the battle <laughs> really royale fast. field. That's yeah. your plan. A yeah. bunch of nudists well, running around I, screaming, looking BTG, for duct tape. BTG, you're, you, you are forgetting what I just mentioned is our power in numbers and our big brains, our opposable thumbs. We can create tools. We can build things. We can build defenses. Trojan yeah. horses. We could. We could fucking put. Uh, you know, we're in we an can arena. Start a pen. So you're somebody. So you're, a, a, so, a so pandemic. You're, I'll start a fucking animal pandemic. Give me a coronavirus that just infects. Fucking. We'll figure it out. Okay. We're so you, so your 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 assertion is that all those epic weaponized objects and systems were created by high speed nudists. That's that's your contention. Is it? <laughs> that's that's what it is. That's where he's going. All right, Ritep, what's your herb don't, or bird? Don't generalize my group of humans. They're a good group, my fifty humans. Okay, um, I don't know much about fucking animals. I'm gonna have a uh, something in, in the water, and I, is so a herp. Explain what an herp is to me again. Uh, Herpetofauna includes reptiles and amphibians. Herp, okay, so amphibians, sure. not okay. herpes, herps. Yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, so I am going. My next pick is then going to be a bird because I don't know. I still have to think about that. So a uh, my my I am also going to pick just the general common uh, hummingbird. Apologies, BTG. You picked a very specific type. I'm still allowed to pick that. And my common are you? hummingbird. Are you? What? What's wrong? I feel like hummingbirds are off the table. Okay, all right, all right, all right. That's fine. I'll, I'll accept I that because it's not Pat telling me that. Shut the fuck up, Pat. I, agree. I will pick the I will pick the seagulls, okay? Oh, okay. Seagulls are my pick, mm-hmm. and they will have the... What bird power? Got to be from Diving, bird. force, and tenacity, talon, speed, sharpness of the... Is it the harpy eagle? The yes. one that dives really fast. It's, you always pick the harpy eagle. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> so, or the golden eagle. So Either way. instead of just a harpy eagle with the harpy eagle's diving ability, you want a much less, a much smaller bird, a it's got, seagull. It's got, web, with, it's got web feet. I now, wanted a more pet like bird, bird just a, a meager pet like bird with a striped shirt and a stupid hat. Doesn't even have a towel. Was it wearing deck shoes? <laughs> just, it's, it's just so BTG. It doesn't you, matter. My fucking humans will corral them all to eat everybody. <laughs> Fuck off. I, They'll I, eat your French fries when you're at the beach. Uh, really quickly, exactly. though. All right, BTG, what's going to be your mammal or herp? Okay. Um, wow. I just, yeah, none of that uh, made sense to me. So uh, <laughs> I'm going to. Uh, <laughs> all right. Who just snorted like that? Was that you, BTG? It, it could have Are you been. a fucking bear? Christ I, almighty. That is my nickname, the big bear, actually, yes. So, nice. And I am a bear expert, so. 
There you go. Um, um, if you don't he, pick a fucking bear right now, I'm off the podcast. I'm gonna get my hopes out of the way. Uh, it's just too good. It's 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 so <laughs> it's so hard to choose. I I, I want to keep the poison thing going because I feel like we don't use poison enough in these battles. And and I was tempted to get a big predatory uh, reptile and then add poison dart frog uh, toxins to it so you couldn't bite it. Uh, but I'm gonna go a different way. I'm gonna go with a Komodo dragon. I know wow. they can be slow and sluggish, but once they get going, there's a lot of don't argue there. And uh, I'm going to add to it a Komodo dragon sized equivalent of the hydrostatic chameleon tongue. Okay. So that slaps you as you go past, draws you in, you get that horrific bite. At, at worst, at best, you're wounded. At worst, you're crippled and you're about to get eaten. So I'm going to mix it up a little bit. So now it's basically, you imagine the, the hitting power uh, of a chameleon tongue, which is as fast as a bullet out of a, out of a handgun, a 9 mil anyway, and it's just <laughs> slapping in so you can't beat it and tripping you up. And then this monstrous giant lizard and its foul breath and its diseased teeth <laughs> is just ripping pieces out of you while you're screaming and you're saying, why did I come here naked? Yeah, those, that's cool. Uh, that, those would never get past my Nile Crocs. I'm going to be safe, so I feel good about that. Um, all right, I have my <laughs> Nile Crocs to protect me. They're going to be my last line of defense. My first line of offense is going to be my mammal. I'm going to take 50 African bull elephants. Again, of course you big, are. Again. They're, they're just stampy. Same shit Hang every on. day. Well, should on. we just quit the, let's just stop the battle royales every time. With the with the with the African elephants and the crocodiles, it's, it's, it's like lame. Usually, it's usually Use your brain. Them. I'm going to give them the power of a naked mole rat. Good. The power. <laughs> Which one? The, they have the, thousands the, of the powers. The naked mole rat does have many powers. They're fascinating. <laughs> they, they do. The naked mole rat has three quarters less pain receptors than other mammals. They feel True. no pain. They ain't scared of shit. Mm, so I will, I'm going to have 50 African bull elephants that are impervious to pain. They will not stop. They will run through until every last one of your shitty animals is dead. Uh, and then I'm going to go to my bird, and this is really, I mean, this is where I've won, and everyone's going to agree with me. I'm going to take 50 cassowaries. Nice. We know they have those big claws. They're very dangerous. But I'm going to give them the flying ability of a peregrine falcon. Fuck off. Mm. So now I've got 50 fucking dragons with giant claws that are flying I'm not really concerned. fast, diving. I've already, I've already put up an iron dome, by the way. BTG, who hates all of my picks, liked that one. Fuck off, Ritzap. Yeah, right, that, 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 that was very good. I, I, I do love that. I, uh, your elephant thing is just stupid. It always was <laughs> stupid. It's lame. <laughs> It's, it's just, just you know, it's monkey brained dumb nonsense. Uh, you know, it's the sequel to the sequel. No one's watching. But Understood. I'm assuming, just to clarify for the, the astute listener, I'm assuming you've intelligently gone with a female southern double waddled cassowary, which is the biggest, the most aggressive peregrine falcon, obviously the fastest bird in the sky. That, that's <laughs> an impressive, an impressive creature. So for my mammal, it's game over, I'm afraid. I was saving it. So I, I got some novel. I, I went with novelty. I wanted to okay. showcase some novelty. The suicidal hummingbirds that are coated in neurotoxin, diving down people's throats, take out all the big animals. And then, of course, uh, just the horror of these Komodo dragons slapping you in the ankles and drawing you in for a tar- terrible bite. That's a wonderful <laughs> it's, it's a wonderful way to mix it up. But <laughs> my destroyer, my, my Vishnu, my destroyer of worlds, is going to be a greater one-horn rhino. The Ooh. largest of all rhino, with the superpowers of a Pantanal jaguar, the most okay. powerful of all the big cats. So now it has now remember that Indian greater Indian rhino or greater one horn rhinos already have devastating canines, and they defend themselves not just by hammering things but by biting. Now they have that additional jaw power, pound for pound, the greatest of any mammal, uh, except for killer whales in their face with these giant teeth, and they have claws on their heavy feet. So they're smashing, tearing, leaping, climbing, and biting. I can't think of a more horrific predator than that hybrid. That's fun. I like it. 
The you brokers guys, are going to have some tough decisions here. Retep? No, they're, they're not your, because well, you guys have now. not thought one step outside of the box. Uh, actually, BTG has a little bit, but okay. uh, Pat, with your African, just fuck off. But my my next my final creature. It, it doesn't matter what abilities any of your stupid fucking monster creations uh, have, because when my giant salamander that has the ability to just be covered in psychedelic toad venom that makes you trip on DMT mm-hmm. comes out and your stupid animals eat them and just conti- all of your animals will they be tripping be. balls with all of these crazy monsters flying around your cassowaries. They're not going to be able to do shit. They'll be paralyzed. While my humans, who are well-trained with big mm. brains, know not to eat these salamanders or touch them, will decimate your scared, meager, even your largest fucking bull elephants and your cassowaries, they're going to be terrified because if you've ever taken okay. psychedelics and had a bad trip and you don't know you're tripping, you are fucked. You are in the pit of hell with my fucking humans, just whatever. They could have a bow and arrow, rocks. It doesn't matter. They're all doomed, all of your creatures. This is yeah. like, this reminds yeah. me of the time that I was on, on jury duty and the uh, guy who clearly got a DUI <laughs> was defending himself. And was just oh, talking nice. in logic circles. I, I just I had a flashback. There's no logic circle. Your animals will all touch or try and devour with their mouths in some way my giant 50 giant salamanders that are covered in psychedelic toad venom. And all it takes is a touch, mates. And they are in the pit of hell psychologically. So just, again, I just it's the combination thing that I, I feel like, you know, quite grasping. Um, a la the, the, the happy eagle and the seagull. I just... <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter. They're, like they're just, out of the equation. I know like, it's a bad it's pick. It's like PTG. a monster movie. You're going. You're going to have a chainsaw and a sandwich. Uh, just like <laughs> why? Why? I just. <laughs> it's so, a great analogy. So in this case, you said giant salamander. So I'm assuming I'm just going to give you the answer and say, okay, the biggest salamander. There's more the poison, giant, more psychedelic poison. They're the big. giant There's Chinese more. salamander is the biggest in the world, and it's huge. But it's give me the still benefit. Basically. It it's still basically a They're turd. They're just there for bait. It's a, it's a turd in a condom. It's They're a just there for bait. They're and just there to be anybody eaten. anybody lick it? Why would anybody because see that? And I didn't say lick it. They're not going to lick it. They're going to no put some of these monster no animals. Just, are gonna why wouldn't they just sm- step on its head and be done with because it? It doesn't matter. What are they, they're still going to fucking get the poison on their foot into their bodies. Very poisonous it, creature. Po- this is, poison doesn't work like that. The whole it definition does. of poison, it's not poison venom. works it. that way. You have to ingest it. That's the difference between poison no. and venom. No. If, Listen, if my sense. humans, my humans will, all 50 humans, each one of them will be holding a giant salamander. Bring it, bitches. That's so, my weapon. I'll be so stuffing it and punching humans, it into your mouth. Your naked humans are running around with this big condom full of shit, telling yep. people to lick it. That's your plan. Yep. No, they're not yes. going to say yes. shit. They Bradley, are not going to say yes. shit. They are going to be punching poison psychedelic well, toad venom into all of your animals' mouths, and your animals will be in the pit of psychological hell. Hey, by the way, and they this will is be why destroyed, you, decimated. You know this what? Is this why is why. We should never drink this much when we do a podcast at 5 a.m. Uh, <laughs> I just, I feel like this circles right back to Discovery buying HBO and Warner Brothers. One of the biggest yeah. hits, one of the biggest, <laughs> hits on, one of the biggest hits on Discovery <laughs> and the birth of Forrest Galante was uh, Naked and Afraid. And oh, now, yeah. and, and, and then we got HBO with all these horror things. And so now we go perfect. We've got yeah. Retep's angry nudist just running around. <laughs> <laughs> hoping people will lick his giant venomous. Not hoping. Well, yes, Humans hoping. are fucking aggressive, vicious, terrible animals. No, I- I'll I'm be punching giant salamander toad venom down each of your fucking African bull elephants, your cassowary. I don't even know what BTG fucking created because it's too complex. Well, My let's let the Brosners decide. Uh, first, thank you. Thank you, BTG. It's been an absolute pleasure. It's always uh, if a you've been, Thank you. If you've been listening... Please do check out uh, BTG's Instagram uh, at Tasmanian underscore Grizzly. That's with two Zs. That's uh, right. Especially if it's you want to see a stingray suck off a human. Yeah, there's that and lots Talk more. Talk about Battle Royale. Lots of other animals <laughs> sucking him off in his youth. Uh, <laughs> so also go on to the YouTube, go on to the <sighs> iTunes and vote. Whose uh, battalion is best? Is it my... 
Uh, Nile, 50 Nile crocodiles that can shoot blood out of their eyes like a horned lizard. Ooh, is, it my, Who cares? is it my 50 African bull elephants that feel no pain like a naked Real ball Real original. Real or original. Or is it my 50 cassowaries who can fly as fast and nimbly as a peregrine? Actually Falcon quite terrifying. Can I, yeah, that was, can I just jump in and say another yeah. quality of, of the naked mole rat that we should appreciate is that they actually can uh, tolerate incredibly low oxygen levels for oh, extended yeah. periods of time. They can, yeah. uh, you know, and, but can and they tolerate gonna, DMT, That's going to be important because when Reteps nudists are fear farting so much <laughs> that all the oxygen in the dome is gone, they There'll will be, no fear farting. be fully functional the, and aggressive. The only, they fear will be farting, fully aggressive. the only fear farting that will be happening will be happening from your animals that are tripping balls. <laughs> all right. So is it my team? Is it BTG's hummingbirds that are going to fly <laughs> with neurotoxin that are going to fly down your throat? <laughs> is it his Komodo dragons with chameleon tongues? Cannon or, tongues, thank you. Cannon thank tongues. You. Or his greater one-horned rhinos that have Pantanal jaguar bite force and claws. Or and is, the most, is the most fearsome team, Peter's 50 streakers who run really fast, as fast as a cheetah. Uh, 50 seagulls who have the flight power of a harpy eagle to come down and steal your Cajun and fries. And the talents. And the talents. And the talents. Or is it his giant salamander, a 55-pound log of shit in a condom, uh, that's covered in uh, DMT. Um, not covered. Whole body. It's, whole it's body. Even, but whole this body. is the thing. Whole body. It's, and it's, the it's humans even, are holding the giant salamanders. So theoretically, they would have ingested it as well. But it's not even. It's not yeah. even fatal. You no, we have chosen, gloves. We've we've invented you, gloves because of our naked, human brains. You're naked and afraid. Like you could have chosen a man. Nah, no one's frog afraid. Or a My humans are not frog afraid. Or a Spanish rib. You, you could have done all these things, but but nope. you chose just just. The the, the 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 psycho toad that was hilarious. Listen, <laughs> yeah. I, I'm gonna fucking I'm gonna hey. spike both your drinks next time we're together with DMT. I was gonna say you tell me you're terrified. I've done it to myself basically. <laughs> this thing is killing me. <laughs> yeah, right. We all have. My BTG, eyes are closing. <laughs> uh, so Forrest will be back next week from Africa. He'll be back. We're gonna do some. Uh, we're gonna go up to Santa Barbara and do a whole bunch of podcasts up there and 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 yeah. do some fun stuff. We're gonna watch. Uh, oh, you know, old episodes of Extinct or Alive. And just do sort of running commentary, mystery science, three thousand style. Uh, would lo- you know? It'd be great to to do one in person someday. Our audience loves you, man. It, we should all get together and uh, I, I would and do love one, that. We should we should hang. walk up to wherever you want to go and and uh, and just do a B movie audio over one of those episodes. That would be totally. Hilarious. Well, we're also thinking. So I have uh, out back in my house here in the in the valley, very close to you, have a big TV. We're, we've been talking about when Forrest gets back. Um, just putting, just getting a, like an hour of just really crazy animal videos and just watching them and having some cocktails and pausing and talking through them. Uh, would you want to maybe join us for something like that? I would love that. And now that it's, uh, I'm assuming we're all fully vaccinated now. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, baby. It, it doesn't feel good. Just that relief to think oh that you God. can get out in the world and feel a little totally. less exposed. I'm, I'm unfortunately in a position of having known uh, some people who've died of COVID and someone who died of blood clots from the uh, Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine. So it's, Jeez. it's you know, hell. I don't want to gloss over the cost of this pandemic. But on the flip sure. side of that, if you have access to the vaccine, go get it. I, I'm, you know, obviously, serving Agreed. the military, as you know. I got injected with everything so that I could be what yeah. they call FE, fit everywhere, so you can go to every combat zone, do what has to be done. In our wildlife profession, we all get juiced up with whatever. I get rabies <laughs> yep. shot every year. I get yellow fever every year. If you want to live an adventure, adventurous life, getting vaccinated is part of that. And I just feel so grateful and relieved to have had a decent vaccine and, and yeah. now be able to catch up with friends in person. I know. Yeah. It's a that. lot more fun. It's I'll tell you what. It's a lot more fun drinking cocktails at this early hour and then being able to hang out after you're done, as opposed yeah. to then having to sh- sort of sheepishly walk into the other room and see our wives and girlfriends and be like, yeah, we're already pretty drunk. Sorry, it's only seven <laughs> o'clock. I'm on the second story. I don't know how I'm going to get down those stairs. <laughs> I, 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 I'm going to have to go down like a hop seal. I don't, it's not going to go well for me. <laughs> not a bull no. seal? <laughs> Let us know. Just a Bradley fat baby hop seal. Just, 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 just yeah, yeah, send yeah. us an IG live. That was a drinking game when I was at, when I was airborne. That was a drinking game we had called, uh, you play it called crocodiles or alligators? And no, you just get drunk and then you dive downstairs and whoever gets the furthest uh, wins. It's that not a good sound, I mean, that, a good game. that, 
No, not a good game. Did you suffer any injuries other than oh, your obvious mental injuries? Injury. Every time, which is why it was hilarious. But, Wait, uh, real quick before we let you go. <laughs> you told me a story once about something when you were in the Tasmanian, when you were in the, the military, and it somehow was all playful, but I think you and another guy both ended up with a broken nose doing something playful that was like a prank. Do you remember the story? Oh, the... When I they mean, were giving each the, other hand jobs, uh, circle jerk, the uh, well, military well, circle jerk. There's thing race involved, obviously. Um, <laughs> sure. No, I I remember that. No, I it was. I felt really bad about this. No, it was my last <laughs> night in the army, and we're getting okay. out, and we had a policy. All the elite combat guys had a policy. Whatever the dress code was for a fancy dress party, we would just wear togas, one pin, no underwear. That was the rule. <laughs> And I remember this is pre Uber and whatever. So you get, you got to catch a taxi and explain yourself and, and you're sort of hanging brain half the time. It's not good. Anyway, so we get to this thing and it's a huge party. It was at a place called 10 Terminal Regiment, which is a water transport regiment. So a fabulous location for their base right by the, by the, by the sea. It's beautiful. Anyway, we had this huge night. It was my turn to go to the bar. And I don't, whether it was because I was under the influence or because no one wants to serve a giant guy in a toga. Uh, <laughs> With one pin holding it together. Right. And, and you know, <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure even the slightest draft and someone's, you know, getting a glimpse of cleft. <laughs> It's not good. <laughs> it's so, like when you're in the sauna with one of those small towels on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I'm anyway, the guys got pissed that I was taking so long to get the drinks. And I just feel this hand just grab my toga and rip it off. <laughs> <laughs> and, naked in the bar. Instinctively. <laughs> Talk about naked and afraid. I just kind of grabbed it. I managed to get um, a very small portion of it. Unfortunately, more than adequate to, to cover my genitals. And, you know, two or three big guys, some guys from the paras and guys from the SAS, and they're just dragging me. I'm barefoot. That's the other part of the rule. you got to be barefoot. And I'm getting dragged. I'm, I'm barefoot skiing across this carpet, naked, except for this tiny corner of this sheet over my junk. And in my panic, I just kind of reach up. With the, uh, if anyone's military parachute training, you know what I mean by the overhand locking grip. And I reach forward and start sheafing in this sheet. And these guys, uh-huh. I didn't even look. I just, it's like being in a rugby scrum. You just bite or punch whichever's on you. Yeah. I just, and I just headbutt the end of it. And I hear Whoa. this crack and everyone kind of falls away. I made myself kind of a, a kind of a diaper. Uh, very quickly, without any offense meant to the great Mahatma Gandhi. And I'm standing in my diaper going, okay, no cause to panic. And I look over there, one of my best friends who just been uh, in the SAS, just being sent to Afghanistan the next day, and I just pancaked his nose. Oh, and what God. made it worse was as a joke early on, again, this is the group that we roll with at the time, we're a little bit drunk, is that we were setting chicken wings on fire and sticking them on each other's back. <laughs> and and he had received a great number of these, and he was already, we'd already gone too far, so he went to war <laughs> in Afghanistan the next, with, and he still smelled like chicken wings with a broken nose. And, uh, he already received a great number of these. Like, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> He's a big Thank- dude, had a big back. And uh, and he wasn't he's not a big hairy beast like me so they, the chicken the burning chicken wings stuck on him more easily. Um, anyway, I felt terrible about it not at the time I thought yeah. it was hilarious. Of but course, now, pancake in retrospect, nose and chicken wings. Man. In retrospect, I think it's very very funny. Yeah, eighteen and, uh, years it's later, hilarious. it's hilarious. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> and, and, you know, I, I got to say, BTG, you shouldn't feel bad about that. Right. Uh, Absolutely they, not. You were nude in the middle of a bar. Um, you have the right to headbutt your friend, hundreds of people. Uh, yeah. look, great stories. Can't wait to have you back, dude. The audience, uh, the Brosners absolutely love you. We love having you on. It's always a really good time. Like I said, his Instagram's great. Peter, take us out. Uh, yes. Thank you. Uh, at Tasmanian underscore Grizzly to see all of BTG's shit that he's doing. Obviously very fucking motivated, entertaining guy, military vet. <laughs> Fucking amazing. Thanks again for coming on, making fun of me. And uh, next time, make fun of Pat a little bit more because he's very meager and he's wearing a striped weird shirt on camera, which is ridiculous. I'm cool. That man. is, a, you know, I just, I feel like, I, I feel like <laughs> I, that Pat 
has so much stacked against him. And he, he, he's, he does. He, he's yeah, so genetically, close, especially. He's so close to being what you consider charismatic and attractive, but he isn't. He's kind of he's, he's, he's kind of he's, he's kind of office hot. And so yeah. you just and you yeah. just, just he, he has to carry that. He has to carry that every day. Yeah, you know? that's rough. So, a lot of weight. Hot. It's a lot of weight on the yeah, shoulders. It's a, it's a great well, pleasure. To Luca, mate, Peter, it's just uh, really appreciate the honor of being uh, brought back and uh, always a lot of fun. Love talking animals. I'm a little bit too drunk for my own good. I'm not going to apologize because we'll do it again next time. Absolutely. If, be sure to check out the other episode we had BTG on. I don't know which one it is, but it's on YouTube and it has his name in it. If you can't find it, you should probably stop using the internet to find all of our shit, the wildtimespodcast.com forward slash info for all of the links. The Patreon is live. There's some shit on there. We talk about it every time. Uh, it's fun. It's great. You want to unlock that content. Uh, and then Forrest will be back next week and we'll be doing the fucking bonus podcasts. Talking eight fucking podcasts a month. You're going to be able to handle that, Pat? I know yeah, I am. Yeah, I'm, I'm super excited about it, dude. In person, all hanging out, getting drunk. I can't wait to edit eight yeah. podcasts a month. Fucking keep signing up for that Patreon, and I'm going to fucking edit these goddamn podcasts. We fucking right. love you. Good love night. Love you guys. Good night. Later, BTG. Love you, too. Cheers, gentlemen. Bye. Hate you, Pat.